When I was young, we came for a visit in Washington. I sat in the Senate gallery, I watched a debate. Uh, Hubert Humphrey was debating, Robert Kennedy was there, and I thought, you know, I'd like to be a senator someday. And uh, I went home from that visit and I wrote on the back of an envelope that I had run for the United States Senate in 1986 or 1988, and I ran in 1986. Funding support for Kent Conrad in Their Words is provided in part by the North Central Council for School Television and by the members of Prairie Public. When you're in D.C. for, you know, an appreciable amount of time, you come to recognize the offices where something special is going on and uh, offices where you just have a collection of professionals who are doing their job. Senator Conrad, for a variety of reasons, has made this place something more than a, an office of professionals. We're all working together to accomplish certain goals for the people of North Dakota, for the people of the country. And people respect him, I know I certainly do, respect the work that he's done for two and a half decades. It's a testament to him. This is a special place to work and it has been for a long time, certainly predating me. He cares about the people who work for him. He cares about the people and their families. I mean, he makes a point of, of being interested not only in you professionally, but personally as well. And there's, there's a real satisfaction with, with seeing this through to the end. Kent is a straight arrow. So there are no pretenses or games with Kent. You know, what you see is what you get. He has a strong sense of humor. So the good news is, is that when one is with Kent, there's a lot of laughing, there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of teasing, but he's a real straight arrow. So that when he says something, I always, I always know he really means it. the highest it has been in 60 years. He doesn't say anything until he's really thought about it. Kent thinks about everything before he says it out loud. We need fundamental tax reform, we need... I've known him for a long time, and he is a very uh, generous person. And I think if you talk to people who've worked for him, they, to a person, would tell you that. He's a planner, and he's a very consistent person in terms of things he cares about. Of all people they might have seen in public life, he really takes this personally. It is personal to him that the budget isn't balanced. If North Dakota's got a disaster, getting relief is personal to him. He takes it home. It, it, it's on his mind constantly. He eats himself up trying to fix problems. It's not a job to him. It is a personal matter of the, of the highest order. He's a quick study. I, I have to say, I don't know how he manages it all. He's really highly intelligent. He's so smart. He has the Ag Committee, the Budget Committee, he writes the budget. I want to welcome everyone to the Senate. Budget. We have Finance, we have the Intelligence Committee. All of these carry with them a huge amount of knowledge that he has to absorb. He knows it all. Examine specific challenges the economy faces. You know, really since the first day I got to Washington, D.C., Senator Conrad has reached out to me and been tremendously helpful, whether it was getting set up or just, you know, really getting into that working relationship. I give him a lot of credit, really, as the senior senator for reaching out and uh, making sure that we're able to work together and have a good relationship. During his first term, he was hands-on with everything. And I don't fault him for that, because when you're in your first term, you want to make sure that you've got all the information you need to vote on an issue, because this will be the first vote that you'll have on an issue that was, is probably going to come up over and over again. So you want to make sure that you do it the right way. I think over time, he's gained much more confidence in the fact that his staff will take care of these things. And, but he still signs his own mail, and he reviews and edits every letter that goes out over his name. So he hasn't lost his attentiveness to being responsive to people in North Dakota and, and just detail generally. But I think over time, he gained more confidence that the staff 
would carry out you know, his, his um, mandate, so to speak. He is exceedingly organized, but he gives you enough room to really be creative. He recognizes the talent in people and then lets the folks exercise that talent. And I think that's, I think that's rare around here. I think he goes out of his way to find something special in an individual and then lets that individual utilize those skills. And I think that goes a long way in our job satisfaction. And I think it, it uh, reflects well in the results that he's achieved for the people of North Dakota. He is demanding because the job is demanding. He expects all of us to put in 110% and we do. He is exceptionally generous, both with his time and with his, his own personal resources. At the end of the day, he does. He cares a great deal about all the people back home in North Dakota. He cares a great deal about all the people that we have working for him out here. You couldn't have asked for a better mentor, for a person to really lead an important effort. He's exceptional in every way. Here are the facts. The debt of the United States Truthfully, I think the um, focus on the budget is basically because of him. All these years, I think he has been speaking out on it on the floor. He's been concerned about it. And all of a sudden, everybody else is catching up with him. It is utterly unsustainable. But Senator Conrad talked about it from the very, very beginning when he was first elected here. But he's worked at it. He's you know, tried to provide solutions, and he, he works very, very hard at finding solutions with the other members. Here we go. I've been spending a lot of time going through boxes of documents dating back to the mid-80s, and I have come across so many legal-sized tablets where he has been, where he has written his priorities, his plans for the upcoming Congress or whatever, and I can tell you that there are two things that are on every list. One is deficit reduction. I mean, this is going back a long time now. Deficit reduction and agriculture issues. And those are two things that have always been very, very important to him. And once he has d determined what his priorities are, he focuses like a laser and can be, I will say determined, but also relentless in terms of uh, achieving those goals. In addition to those two overriding issues, he has been um, very uh, attentive to the state's needs. And I can remember the 1997 flood in Grand Forks. And he was the guy who got the president on the phone and said, you need to come out and see this. This is not a flood where you just have some water in the basement. This, this is a flood that's, uh, your house is gone. Literally thousands that's also um, a mark of, of Senator Conrad. He does not spend a lot of time at the lower levels of government trying to accomplish something. He tends to start at the top. And it's been a very effective way for him to deal with especially state issues, whether it's flooding, whether it's keeping the air bases open. He has absolutely no qualms about calling the Secretary of Defense the Secretary of Agriculture about whatever the needs and concerns are of the state and working at that level. He lit the fuse that forced the Congress and the President to address the indebtedness with the Super Committee and all the other machinations, the, the Special Commission. None of that was happening without Ken Conrad. With him pushing, and he, he, he used certain levers that people don't even know about, that forced the President and forced the Congress to do these things. I think that's very important. This is a message from a large group of senators. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, he's the man that they turn to in the Senate to get guidance. And he's just, he's very, very well respected by his colleagues as the expert on anything budget related. Mr. President, that is the blueprint. The Senate's going to miss him a lot. And I hear this from other chiefs of staff. We're under no illusions here. We know. Kent came back from Stanford University and he was interested in getting involved in, you know, the political system. He'd worked on the 18-year-old election uh, campaign, so he was uh, very interested in getting involved in the state's politics. And as was often the case, I said, let's go for a walk. So we walked on that uh, long old sidewalk in front of the Capitol building and uh, 
I thought, you know, he'd be fun to work with, number one. He's very smart, very interesting, and uh, so I said, why don't you come to work uh, in the tax department with me? Kent and I were hired by Byron Dorgan around the same week or within two weeks of each other. When I first met Kent, both of us felt that there was no way the two of us could have anything in common. I was all about causes, my causes, the women's movement, the anti-war movement. He laughed a lot. He had this sense of humor, and I was serious about the issues of the day. And that's how I first met Kent Conrad, who thought that uh, I was too much of a militant, and I thought he was awfully young. Lucy and I were hired really weeks apart, and when we were hired, hired uh, by Byron, didn't particularly like each other. First, I noticed very quickly, she was very, very smart and very, very capable. And then over time, uh, developed a friendship. And you know, at some point I realized, really, this woman is my best friend. And then uh, much later, a romantic relationship developed. So uh, I've been very fortunate. I've been very fortunate to have Byron as a friend and uh, Lucy, who became my wife. We knew we cared about each other at the time that he asked me to run his campaign. I think maybe the, the, the bigger question is, how did our relationship survive a U.S. Senate race when I was the campaign manager and he was the candidate? Because that is one rough thing to do. The tension, the stress, the hours. And we figured if we could survive all of that and still love each other, we should be married. And so we got married actually um, on Valentine's Day in 1987, which is about a month after he was sworn into office. <laughs> Many people probably have not been exposed to um, what I would call an interesting sense of humor. He likes to tell long involved stories that he thinks are hilarious and most other people think are funny as well. One time Jay Rockefeller, I'd given a, a speech on the floor and he told me how much he admired my charts. So I got some of the worst charts I've ever prepared and I sent them over to his office wrapped in a bow. And I said, now what I'd like to do is trade you for some of the artwork in your office. You know, he has some of the classics, Monet, Manet, Degas, Picasso, and I offered to trade him even up my charts for his artwork. And Jay really enjoyed the humor in that. <laughs> <laughs> he has an unusual sense of humor. He is often fond of, of uh, telling folks who inquire about what he's gonna be doing once his time in the Senate is over. Um, that he is either A, going to be parking cars at the Kennedy Center, or B, that he fully expects to be uh, under contract with a Major League Baseball team um, some, when next spring rolls around. We've done our best to tamp back his expectations, but in more general terms, uh, I think his sense of humor really helps, especially in the, the more stressful moments that we're here. He, he really lightens, lightens the mood at the appropriate time. Now, I, I gave the news to Don. That I'll be taking yeah. over as your chief of staff on yes. January 3rd. Oh, really? And that I, I'm going to need more office space than <laughs> maybe a conference room. When I was growing up, I wanted to be the next Mickey Mantle. And the first time I faced a pitcher that threw a tough curveball, I realized I was not going to be the next Mickey Mantle instantly. Um, but I never lost my love for baseball. I think one of the things that brought Kent and me together is our mutual love of baseball. I am a lifelong fan of baseball. I didn't come to this suddenly when I got a job with baseball. I was a huge baseball fan. It's something I shared with my father and with my mother. So many years later, here is Kent Conrad. He loves the game too. And he has this incredible memory of the stats. No, there's nothing better than being a baseball fan if you like numbers, because baseball is all about numbers. I love numbers. And 
There aren't many people who do, <laughs> but I do. Well, one thing I like to do at baseball games is I like to calculate um, when somebody's up and they get a hit, how that changes their batting average. So I like to do these, you know, mental calculations and then report to my wife what somebody's batting average has become. I say, Kent, it's okay. <laughs> I don't need to know that. But Kent knew it. He would always figure out what the difference would be in someone's batting average from this time he got up to the next time he got up. So part of the game for him was this satisfaction of being able to put the, his knowledge of numbers to use. And I don't know, it appeals to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do we have the lowest cost food... Senator Conrad has always had a real knack to remember details and numbers, but he's very analytical. Uh, so real understanding of numbers, but uh, very intelligent and very detailed, very analytical. And, and that comes through, and, and it's not, I mean, we know it uh, because he's a North Dakota senator, but other uh, people around Washington know it as well. You come very quickly to learn when you work for him that any numbers that you speak of in any capacity or any numbers that you put down on a piece of paper, they better be accurate because he's, as, as has been well documented, he is a numbers guy. And so uh, he will forgive certain slip ups, but the math better be right. And we all understand that. What you see, which is a committed, smart, ambitious human being who cares deeply about the state of North Dakota, that's who Kent is. But what people don't know is how damn funny he is. <laughs> it's incredibly funny. And I think it's that charisma uh, and that charm. And then combine that with his relationship over the years with Byron and his relationship over the years with all of the bench that he helped create. I think he is a pivotal figure in the history of North Dakota. For 40 years we worked together effectively. It's, uh, it was the start of a long and really wonderful relationship with somebody that I deeply admire, a, a great friend, but also somebody that I've watched over the 40 years that I've been involved in politics who uh, really made a difference, worked very hard for his state, was a, a national leader here in the Congress. Uh, you know, he's had a wonderful career. Bill Clinton used to say that when the North Dakota congressional delegation is on the Senate floor, the IQ goes up appreciably. The fact that you have what is, for the most part, a, a Republican-leaning state that for almost two decades continued to send three Democrats uh, to Congress and that those three individuals happen to be the best of friends is, is something truly unique. It's not something you see around here. In looking at contrasting styles, uh, one staff member uh, kind of assessed body parts to us. They said that, uh, that well, I, I was the heart, Byron was the voice, and Kent was the mind of the North Dakota congressional delegation. It's like, you know, a, a rope with three strands. The, the three strands together are much stronger. Th that was true, it seems to me, with the way Kent and Earl and I worked. I mean, it wasn't a case where he was off doing this and doing that, or Earl was doing. We were meeting, talking about, all right, what do we need to do to pull together to get some things done in North Dakota on this project and this issue? I think he's very proud of many accomplishments here, but this is not a man who's always satisfied with having done a lot. And I think that you know, there, are, there are going to be some issues. The deficit is still going to be an issue into next year. It's, it's very frustrating because he has not been able to, I think, resolve some of the issues that he would like to. But he's going to look back on 26 years. and. It's, it's truly been amazing what he's been able to accomplish for, for not only North Dakota, but for the nation. I think he would probably say sustaining the farm program and fighting for North Dakota's agriculture was, has got to be so high on his list. But I would also say to you that his role as chairman of the budget committee, you know, when Bill Clinton was president, and there was a Republican House, Democratic Senator, Senate, we balanced the budget. There are books that have been written that point out the role that Kent Conrad played in convincing Republicans and Democrats of the bipartisan way to go to get this country to a balanced budget. I would say that that would go down for Kent as one of the key things that he did. And so you can imagine 
the agony <laughs> he has felt as he has seen us move in a different direction over the last decade. Well, certainly somebody that, that represented North Dakota vigorously, that was willing to work hard and do a good job, recognized that you know he serves the whole country, but that truly uh, was a senator who represented North Dakota and worked hard to do a good job uh, for our state. Somebody that, that was here that really appreciated the fact that it's an honor to represent the people of North Dakota in this country. I think Kent would say that voting against the war in Iraq would be one of the key, the key things that he fought for about which he is proud. At the time, voting against going to war in Iraq was a hard, hard decision. Let me be clear. I do not oppose the use of force against this lawless and dangerous tyrant. But I cannot support the resolution before us as it stands. It is too broad. But Kent always does his homework. He read everything that was available on whether or not there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And by doing his homework, Kent knew. He knew. He came to the conclusion there were no weapons of mass destruction. There was not a clear and compelling reason for the United States to conduct what would turn out to be a long and incredibly expensive war in Iraq. That should be, I think, part of his legacy. I thank the chair and yield the floor. He is a fighter, and whenever he had any notion that we, we in North Dakota were not being treated fairly in, in any way, he did not relax until he had it fixed. Kent Conrad is the most ferocious advocate the state has ever had. He is uh, unrelenting in his advocacy and utterly thorough in what he's seeking. He will never, ever quit. And it's just, in the end, the state has won time and time again because Kent just never gives up. I think his legacy is one of innovation, of looking at real problems and trying to solve real problems, not just keeping the seat warm wherever he was, but actually digging down, finding out what it is that 100 years from now people would really care about and that needed to be done to build a solid foundation 100 years from now. And I think of Kent as one of the brightest politicians I know, one of the most principled politicians, but one of the most innovative. In some ways, it was difficult for Kent to walk away from such a fulfilling career in the Senate and to not have just one more hurrah, uh, especially since he became chairman of the Budget Committee and has played such an incredible role in, first of all, sounding the alarm about our fiscal crisis in this country, but to be a part of coming up with a plan for how we can resolve it. I would say there were moments when he thought, it's, it's hard to walk away from this role that I've played. But it was also true that Kent served 26 years more than a quarter of a century in the Senate. Doing that was a challenge for us in our lives as a family, as parents, grandparents. And so at some point, Kent knew, regardless of the draw of being in the Senate during these times, so that I can make a difference, I've tried, I've done my best. I'm ready after more than a quarter of a century to not do that anymore, to walk away. And once he made that decision, he was fine. There's a lot of concern across the state about losing uh, basically a Hall of Famer like Kent Conrad from service United States Senate. I share those feelings, but I share a different dimension of feelings too. Kent has worked harder than anybody for two generations on behalf of this state. If you 
know him and love him like I do, you, you, you know that he is tired to his core. Uh, I'm now out of the arena, uh, finding that when you have a little more time, and chance to smell the roses and put some perspective in life, it's a very important part of the life experience. So I'm happy for what Kent has ahead. And nobody I've ever known deserved a retirement better than Kent Conrad. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. And I, people seem shocked by that. How could you leave this position and this position of respect, being a United States Senator, a senior United States Senator, how could you leave that when you have no idea what you're going to be doing? Uh, I, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do. But something good will happen, and I'm looking forward to it. Funding support for Kent Conrad in their words is provided in part by the North Central Council for School Television and by the members of Prairie Public. To order a DVD copy of Kent Conrad in their words, including the bonus video, A Conversation with North Dakota Senator Kent Conrad, please call 1-800-359-6900 or visit our online store at www.prairiepublic.org.